I'll just start. Um, I think we're going to start with seven. So that was connecting that the, he spoke a lot about the idea of the specialty of the day that we're in, the day of the week and the day of the month, and what that means to us and what that means in God, God's terms and our terms, and how we have the power through the days of the month to draw into the world a revelation of godliness that we have the power to bring down into the world um, through our Torah and our mitzvahs. Something, a power that God gave us by giving us Torah and mitzvahs to draw down revelations of godliness that are above the limitations of the world. This is the power of bringing down um, unlimited power of godliness. It's not limited by the definitions of, and the rules and of nature, the laws of nature. And that's how we we also with that power we manage to create yantiv. You know, we give we we sanctify time. Okay, the time of the month, the days of the month that we sanctify. It's the power that Hashem gives us through being able to draw godliness above the world that's not set forth from before, like Shabbos. Shabbos is always there every week, no matter what, the seventh day of the week. But the day of the month is something that's given to us to sanctify and to elevate. No. So, so he's saying over here, um, yes, we did number seven a little bit, and we, yes, and then number seven, and paragraph seven, I'll just recap. Um, we have the, Zoeva talks about the fact that of, um, Moshe, right, on the 17th of Tammuz, um, oh, there was something else that happened on the 17th of Tammuz. It was a another destruction, aside from the destruction of the of the walls right that we said of the 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 the, the difficulty when they were when the Jews were being surrounded by and um by their enemies and they were conquering the Yerushalayim and the, the whole destruction was taking place in the, the holy temple aside from that there was another time that something difficult happened was the 17th of Thomas was the day that Moshe Rabbeinu broke the luchos broke the tablets right he came down from the mountain he saw the jews sinning and he threw the the right threw the tablets down broke them now we find something very interesting that hashem says to moshe like like well done if you want to translate it into english Yisha means straight, kachacha, your strength should be straight, straight, shashibat, that you have broken them. I mean, you, you'll be strengthened. And Hashem is like agreeing that it was a good thing. So, so what is, what's what's going on over here? <laughs> what the Rebbe says in parentheses in this paragraph seven, that through, through having, bringing about the second tablets, the next set of tablets, something something good happened. So there's an inner good in the breaking of the tablets that something was added to us and given to us more in the second tablets than we had in Torah than the, we didn't get in the first tablets. And that's explained more in the Midrash. And that's why Hashem said thank you kind of to, to Moshe Rabbeinu. You did the right thing. And there's something that's brought about into the world through Moshe Rabbeinu's strength. His Isha Kochacha, your strength. Koch is, is strength. Kochacha is your strength. So Hashem says through your strength, something great came about. And it was, the Rebbe says specifically through our powers, our, our work, our power, our koch of the person, of a man down here below, man or woman down below, that is something that's added and increased in our understanding and learning of Torah when we, that we can bring about. And the Rebbe says this is similar to the power of the service of tshuva, Tshuva, Hashem can't do for us, right? We have to do tshuva. We have to bring about, it's, it's instigated from below. We have to want to reconnect to God. That's the whole concept of tshuva is that we, on our own, without God arousing us, we want to connect and we want to fix and we want to come close, right? So that's, that's the, there's something very potent, very strong in the service of tshuva that comes from us and it's our power to do it. And, um, but Shubhai says, you know, yeah, we, we need to instigate it, but later on Hashem also gives us strength 
and uh, empowers us to do it. But still, tshuva, right? That desire to to connect to God from a place of that humility, okay, is from below. Okay, I want to share with you something that um, I didn't. I, I thought about yesterday, afterwards, which is connected to what we've been learning. Remember how the uh, therapist was taking different letters and um, explaining the difference between them. And he says, like, the difference between the Dalit and the Resh, for instance, right? He said that the Dalit and the Resh, they both have a horizontal line and a vertical line, which means, you know, the spreading out of the wellsprings is like the horizontal line spreading outward, and then the vertical line is drawing godliness down into the world. He connected it to Yafutsu minus Sechachutsu. We spread the wellsprings out. So we spread it out. Yafutsu is spreading out. And Chutza is drawing it down, down here below. So um, he said, what's the difference, though, between the Dalit and the Resh? Dalit and the Resh, the difference, and I'm going to connect this to a story, <laughs> is there's there's just a little Yud, the Rebbe says, on the top right of the Dalit that's added to the Resh. And what is that little Yud? Remember, the Rebbe said it's Bittel. It's we're humble, we're no, no, it's not really humble, it's nullification, it's an awesomeness, an awareness, an openness to Hashem. It's okay. So, if you have what came to me yesterday was if you have the Shema, okay, Shmaiso, my husband was writing a Shema for a Tfilin yesterday, and the, the word Echad has in it the letter Dalid, right? The last letter of Shmaiso, the Shamel Ken Hashem Echad is Dalid. If God forbid, the, the, you know, the letters are not 100% clear, not written properly or erased or something. And there's that little yud gets like, um, gets missed out or comes off, you know, which sometimes happens. And this, I did hear a story of somebody who they had their mezuzahs checked. And instead of it saying Hashem Echad, it said Hashem Aleph Ches Reish, which means other. Okay, like you shouldn't have other gods. So instead of it being Echad, it was um, which means another or a different one. So the, obviously the mezuzah was puzzled. So it's just a little, little teeny, teeny bit of the point of bit that makes a difference between Hashem is one or something completely the opposite. And I was thinking that because I had been to somebody's house that had idols in their house and I had like been to another place, another facility and there's there a Buddha there and I was like, What's all these Buddhas? <laughs> I wanted to kind of clear my mind of that that energy and that vision. I was saying, like, how do I get that out of my mind? What is Hashem really? I was thinking Hashem Echad. And I was thinking, wow, there's such a small difference between Echad and Echad. And then I remembered that story of the mezuzah. And I remembered what the Rebbe was said in that sikha that we just learned, like, you know, the last week or two weeks ago. The difference between a Dalit and a Resh is just that little yud, that little point of bitl. Makes, you know, also that in the Torah, there's always someone that's mentioned called the Acher. Yeah. Which is interesting. Yeah. Well, that's, um, where's that in the Torah? Do you know? I can't remember, but I remember that. Okay, because it's from the, the Gemara. It's talking about Acher is the, is the one who um, um, they say founded Christianity. Okay. That's how he's, he's termed in the Gemara or called him by his colleagues in the Gemara. Anyway, so, um, yeah, let's um, let's look inside. So it's just an interesting point that came to me I wanted to share with you because that's another mezuzah story. And you know what's interesting about that? Um, mm -hmm. Because Hashem is saying it's not Acher, it's not Hashem is three, Hashem is, it's, so he, Rebbe's saying Hashem is not Acher. Like that's so, that's interesting. And the other level of that, like, I didn't realize how bad it was that. Yeah, Hashem, Hashem is, but the point that I took from the story, uh, or the Rebbe, connecting that story to the Rebbe's words, is that when I was trying to clear my mind of the thoughts of that those idols that I'd seen, <laughs> then what's the difference between, why, what do people think of, a, of an idol? They think it's a, it could be a very, very slight difference between knowing that Hashem is the creator, and then having that bittel, and not having bittel. That's all it takes though is this, this that little mindset of bittel to completely give no credence or no space to something other than Hashem and knowing that Hashem is one. So that bittel, that nullification to God, that it's really all oh, God, everything, God is everything. <laughs> There's no others. That takes bittel. Okay. 
takes bittel. Bittel is that that realization that we don't know. We're open to God. We're you know we're open to Hashem. As you know, right? Bittel means we're not we're not saying we know everything and we understand everything and we know how it works. Okay, bittel is like that's a surrender, the godliness that is you know a higher power. Okay, so let's go to Ches. Um, Okay, so it's connected to, to, okay, we went, and Ches, we also, yeah, we started about the, the Paraduma, the red heifer, and it says this, this mitzvah of Paraduma, it says about this Zoschu Kas HaTorah, this is the law of the Torah, and the Rebbe asks, why is it, this is the law of the Torah, there's many laws of the Torah, and he says, in general, the mitzvah of the red heifer, red heifer has in it the symbolism of the main um, aspects of serving God. It has in it both the ratzel and the shov. It has the the run towards God, the wanting to leave our physical existence and leave our mundane world and leave the responsibilities or the 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 details of having to deal with this earthly world and body and things, and wanting to just run to godliness. That's called ratzel and just be one with God. And that's signified with this, the burning of the paraduma, that fire, or the fire of wanting to just ascend. And then they took water uh, and put it into a vessel that uh, when they were making the tikkun, the fixing of the red heifer, they, in order to, to be able to purify people, they need to have that water in a vessel. What's the water in a vessel? That signifies the shov, the Rebbe says. Shov is the return down below to actually bring godliness down into this physical world, <laughs> drawing down godliness down here below, making Hashem a dwelling place in this world, in the physical world, in the little details of the world, in the little things that we think are not so revelations of godliness, to us seem like they're very mundane or very far or distant. That's exactly what God wants us to do, is to reveal godliness in all these little mundane things that don't seem to be so uh, necessary or important or desirable. They seem to be not godly. So that's the whole point. God wants us to make those things godly, reveal God in those things that we um, aren't, that take up more of our effort to reveal godliness in them. They're not on their own revealing godliness. That's why God put us here, to reveal the godliness in them, okay? not to just run away from it. Okay? The Yishlomar. So now the Rebbe's Chidosh. Okay, this is where we left off yesterday. The Rebbe is giving his own insight, his new awareness insight. The, the, the difference between this ratzo, which is the ascending and wanting to leave, leave the mundane physical world, and the return, drawing, drawing down godliness into the world, is similar to the difference between the seven days of the week and the day, the ten days of the month, that day of that, the day the Rebbe said the sicha was on the Shabbos. It was the seventh day of the week, and it was the tenth day of the month. But in general, the difference between the days of the week and the days of the month. So Ratz, uh, running, you know, ascending, tax is showing us and teaching us about this the service of the desire to ascend to go above the world. Ad both in the cotton of Rashi, point where your soul is like yearning and dry, being drawn out. Lamala Magvata wants to go out from the from the limitations of the body. Similar to the concept of ten, the ten is like reaching the level of unlimited beyond the world. Now show drawing down godliness into the world is It's a service of drawing down from above to below to draw down godly lights into tangible vessels below, into the physical world that we can see God in this world. That's the service of a soul in a body, specifically in a body. We have to draw down in vessels that are according to the limitations and the definitions of the world and the body. Similar to the idea of seven, which is the law and order of the world in the cycle of seven days of creation. Now, how do we make the complete whole service of Hashem true and complete? Is when we you combine these two services together. It's not one or the other. It's it's together. Together with the desire of the body to go out and to ascend and to leave and and like 
We still have to go um, do it with a soul in a body. And when we're trying to ascend or leave the limitations of this of our body, we have to have this feeling and the sense and intent, the kavana, that we're we need to draw down all this godly senses of uh, beyond limitation down here below. When we're down here below and we're dealing with business and physical things and and you know tangible physical limited finite things that don't you don't see godliness in them, we have to remember and feel that it's against your will that you are alive. This is a quote from Pirkei Because when you're in a soul in a body, you are always in this state. Of, of of wanting to ascend always about to like to leave this world to kind of like not have to deal with with the physical or want to just be one with God as he is beyond the world but so therefore we have to realize that it's against our desire our innate desire of leaving the world is that Hashem is telling us you must live in this world against your will you're alive because your inner will is to just leave and, and connect back to God and we have to feel in it, though, that this is the right inner kavana, the inner uh, intent is to be down here below. Now, until you um, connect this to another sikha of the Rebbe, and it was printed in English, you can look it up about, I, I forgot what it's called, a, t- a Time of Laughter or something like that. It's a white, small book. Just It, it took one like sikha of the Rebbe explaining the, um, the idea of, you know, Rabbi Akiva, when he went and saw he went with, there's a story in the Gemara that he and a few other people, his colleagues, people, I shouldn't say people, big rabbis, went to the Harabais. They, they saw after the destruction of the temple, they saw foxes on the temple mount. And they, um, the rabbi started crying and Rabbi Akiva started laughing. And, you know, they were asking Rabbi Akiva, what, you know, are you mad? Why are you, why are you crying? Where's, he said, "Why are you laugh? Why are you cry- why are you crying?" He said to them, and they said, "Because we see, we see the destruction of the temple." And he and they said, "Why are you laughing?" And he said, "Because." And it's that that's the whole sicha of um, which the Rebbe explains this idea, which he's going to explain over here. So I'm not going to. I, I didn't read that sicha lately. It's a long time ago, so I'm not going to mention how, what the Rebbe answers there because it's not fresh in my mind. But I know that that's it's the same idea what the Rebbe is saying here in this sicha about the rebuilding. Now, what I did want to mention from that sicha is that the Rebbe does say that there were four people who went into the pardes, four rabbis, not people, four big tzaddikim, holy men, who went into what's called uh, uh, searching for God in a very, very abstract holy teachings that their whole soul had to ascend. There was a ratzel. There was going into this higher level of consciousness, of, of understanding and awareness of godliness on a level that's beyond what we normally can um, comprehend in our brain. And they went exploring into something very high and very deep. And it says that the only one who came out of it normal, <laughs> you know, um, was Rabbi Akiva also. And so the Rebbe explains why why did Rabbi Akiva merit to be able to go ascend, have this higher itself, and then yet come back and be normal back in this world as if, you know, the world was was a, a normal place to be and function this, you know, with, you know, continuing to our mitzvahs and drawing Hashem in a level of limited consciousness um, in the definitions of the world was because when he had the sense of the Rebbe said, the Rebbe said, he had the inner kavana, it's exactly what the Rebbe says here, he had that intent, that kavana, that the purpose of the ascent and leaving be, going beyond this world is to draw down godliness into this world. And he knew it at the time before he went that he's going to come back down and come back into this world and live the world, you know, with revealing godliness in this world. So his inner intent was there the whole time and he was able to come back into the life as we know it um, with all the, you know, the concealments of God and yet still function in the world, um, having seen what he had seen at with his ascent. Okay, so that's just, um, if you want to read it, it's in English. Uh, well, can, I, can I ask you something? Yeah. Do you think he told the other ones that they have to have Kavanah, that they're just going to up there to bring down the Kedush of Hashem, and that they have to come back? Do, do you think he instructed what the Kavanah had to be in their minds? 
I don't even know if he was aware that they were doing that. I, I don't know what the story was exactly how it took place. But the Rebbe said he had Kavanah the whole time, right? Rabbi Akiva had Kavanah, yeah, but I don't know what, if they even, if it was, they were doing it together. I don't know if they were sitting together and doing it. It could be different times, different places. No, I think they, no, it said they went in together. Oh, yes, they did? We know exactly who they were and what they, what happened. But now, but I've never heard that part, that he had Kavanah. The reason why he made it out was he had the proper Kavanah. Yeah, well, that's what the Rebbe explains about him. So only the Rebbe... <laughs> can you repeat, can you just repeat the proper Kavana again? Here, it's right here in the Sikha. That's why I brought it up. I'll read it to you. Even in Hebrew. Yeah. Here, it's the end of... It's it's in the middle of paragraph 8. It's the second paragraph in paragraph 8. Shlemut avodahi b'chibush neim yachad. The shlemus, the complete service of Hashem, is connecting the two together. The ratzah and oh, the shlemus. So hibush is to right. dress hibul. yourself in. Hibul, it, right? hibul is to connect, to unite, to put together. Oh, you didn't say hibush? No, hibul, hibul. Oh, hibush oh, nehem, okay. hibush okay. nehem. That's why the, the okay. connecting the two of them That's together. Wrong. Okay, so beyachadi ma'atzot. The ratzah is one. The shav is the other, and putting the two together, combining the two, hibul is to combine them. Um, so, so, biyachad, so how do you combine them? Biyachad, the Rebbe explains, biyachad in ha, so together with this desire to leave and ascend and go up, uklot nefesh, that's the desire of the soul to leave, tzricha liyot avodah ki neshama beguf, we still have to have the service of a, a soul in a body. Ubeha atzo, tzricha liyot mugeshet hakavana, when they have the ascent, the, dry, the yearning to leave this world, you have to feel the intent, the kavana, that we have to draw down all this, you know, higher revelations or higher feelings of godliness, awarenesses down here below. And when you're having this drawing down and getting back to reality into this world, uh, this limited world, you have to feel that I'm only doing this because I'm being commanded to live in this world. It's against really my real will. My inner will is, when we're a soul in a body, the, the soul constantly wants to leave the body and be in this um, higher awareness, leaving the limitations of the body. Okay? So that's our soul. The soul always wants to go higher, and we have to feel when we're coming down and living in this world that we're living against our, our will, that we have to be here in this world because Hashem wants it, okay? So it's against our, the inner will of our soul in a body, but we are doing it against our will, okay? So that's that's having that intent, the Rebbe says. When you're having the ascent, you have the kavana. Uh, I'm going to, the true intent of Hashem is that I should be living in this world, okay? Both when you're ascending and when you're coming down, okay? Now the Rebbe puts in brackets over here, more detail. Let me just see if there's anybody I should greet. But that even means that Hashem wants us. You know what I mean? Like people think we're not part of this. Hashem wants us. He brought us here and he wants us in the world. Yes, like, exactly. You do make stories of people go, that go up, but what it seems that they go up and come down. But the Rev is saying you have to have the Kavanah to take what is in Shemaim and bring it back down with you. Yes, like right. Like you're the builder. Right. Like the Build the building, bring the building materials with you back down. Right. That when you're ascending and your soul's going up the ascending, you have to always be conscious that really the intent is I'm ascending in order to draw it down because that's what Hashem wants, right? So I'm, I'm, the whole intent is I'm not ascending, so I'll just ascend unlimited and just expire or leave this world or it's to it's to bring it down. Yeah, so that's the kavana. So that's what the Rebbe said. Um, Rabbi Akiva had that kavana. So welcome, Ahuba and welcome, Rifka and welcome. Um, uh, okay, I think that's it. I, everybody else, I think I greeted. Okay. Yes, so now let's go to this amazing, amazing Sikha Nerva says in more detail. Yesh Loma, the Rebbe says Yesh Loma, which means also, again, the Rebbe is, the Rebbe is Chiddush. Shainan de Chodesh levana, yeshnan bad gesha, shnein in de atzav eshov. When we have this concept of the month, which is the moon, which is, by the way, the Rebbe doesn't mention here, but it's the women. We have all our fluctuations of our times of the month, right? We have both emphasized the, the run and the return. There's a pasuk in, um, in Shmuel, 
where it says you were remembered because your place was remembered. It's, it's one of the, it's that whole story of David and Yonatan, and they were trying to determine if Shaul was was running, was trying to kill him or not. And, and they made a, a sign that, you know, that Yonatan said to David, don't come to the Rosh Chodesh gathering in his father's home, and we'll see how his father reacts, okay? So he was missing at on Rosh Chodesh, and the Rosh Chodesh celebration in Shaul's, uh, the house of the king. So what's happening? Mi'utalvana, and the month, we have days where we're less, okay? We're feeling less, we're feeling low. Okay, the Levana is, the moon is smaller. We're missing, okay? There's a missing moon a little bit. It shows how the moon is battle, nullified. It comes from a place of feeling, I have nothing. I want to receive the light from above, from the light of the sun, which is to, I want to get something from the mashpia. I'm missing. Um, and I want to put, it says when a, when there's something in halacha, when something is, is trying to absorb, it doesn't give out. It's significant to kashus. So the point is, is when you're trying to, to you're feeling, I, I want to receive, I want to get from the mashpia, then you're, you're, you're in a, whole, a wholesome place. You're in a good place because you're not, you're not, okay, oh, I think you're in a good, so, yeah, I mean, there's a, a good part to it. This brings about, yeah, the new moon bring we created a new. You'll be remembered. So we're in, when we're in a state of like we're feeling that we're missing and we want to be connected to Hashem, and so that like the moon is is doesn't is not appearing and it and it yearns to receive from the sun. That brings about the drawing down of the revelation. and that makes it able for us to come down below. Revealing the moon again, a new it's to shine upon the earth. So there's this, what's the run on the turn that I was connecting it to the moon as it goes, becomes less and less, and then it wants to receive from the sun. And then once it, it's feeling like it's missing and lacking and it wants to receive light, it will receive light and it becomes, it does receive light from the sun and it renews itself and starts appearing again. Now, that's the end of paragraph eight. Paragraph nine. According to this, what we're mentioning now, how does this, we can understand better the connection to the celebration of the Yantiv of Chaga Geula, the day of redemption of Yud Beisit Gimel Tamos, the day the previous Rebbe came out of um, um, exile. Shemit Barech Uba Betocha Gimel Yamim Rishim Deshbat Zul Asir Bishal Matumus, which come, it's blessed by the, that Shabbos that they're in, and it's coming soon. Okay. There is given us a lot of secrets, powerful secrets of good things that we can we can do with um with um with the powers that it gives us, with the power of Torah. Hashem gives us the power so we can have tremendous power. Okay. So what is it? Um, we have a power. It says Hashem created the world, looked into the Torah, and he created the world. And there's this what the rabbis say. They say this, it's in the Zohar. Okay, this is from the Zohar. Hashem looked in the Torah and created the world, and man looks in the Torah and gives existence to the world. That's a quote from the Zohar. So what's this power? Dubal, it's spoken before in paragraph four, Shabbat Yashnan Shtedel God, Torah has two levels to it. Torah Shabikhtab, Torah Shabape. You have the written Torah and the oral Torah. The oral Torah includes the word, words of Kabbalah, things that were drawn down, and it, you know, it's Hasidis. Torah Shabikhtab, Nal Milamala, Lachem Meduba, Sham, Begalui, Behina Tanet Bekar Tukach. He's repeating something that and clarifying something that he said before in the Sikha in paragraph four, that there's two aspects of Torah, the revealed aspect of Torah, the written Torah, and which was given from above to below, and therefore it's 
the revelations are give us power to reveal mostly the um, the good that's that's easily is that's revealed good that's easy to reveal okay so it gives us power to reveal the good that's uh, that's already in the wholeness of the creation and uh, it's like similar to the idea of the shabbos which is always holy it's a revealed holiness a revealed good it's it doesn't take too much effort okay shabbos is already there and we can connect to shabbos no matter what okay let's just re-enter I got one off. Welcome. I'm back on. Let's see who else is on. Still hey, wait a minute. Yes, hi, Rizka. Hi, Rizka. Hi, Chavrachal. Hi. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Let's see, does Ahuba know that she has to re enter? Or don't don't forget to um, tape record. Yeah, I'm recording it, but I if like a Hoover doesn't come back in, or Karen maybe remind a Hoover that she can re-enter. Okay, I'll re I'll I'll re. Oh, wait a minute. Can I ask a question while we wait? Sure, sure. Okay, so you said Hashem looked into the Torah and created the world. A Jew looks into the Torah and what? Mekayem Olam. He gives uh, existence. Oh, oh, thank you. He was existing. Kiyum, Kiyum was ex uh, Kayam is existing. So he gives existence. I guess, um, so the Rebbe can explain, explains more. This is similar to the idea. Welcome. Let's see. I'm just going to give her one more chance for Hoover to come in. Let's give her another half a minute. It's not her fault. <laughs> um, see, there's two systems of orders of, of revealing God in the world. They're both good. But the Rebbe says we we can we need to do both. Yeah. It's, so and it's existence. Yeah, keeping keeping the world existing and the revealing God in this world from our part. We're partners in creation. I don't see a hoover. Does somebody want to call her and explain to her? Because she may not know. So what are the secrets? I mean, does anyone have her phone number? Is she on? So she's on the she's on the chat. Oh, she has, um, what's her last? A hoover? A hoover coats. Coats. Okay. What? You just mentioned that he's giving very big secrets right now. What? You just said that he was giving very big secrets right now. Who? Who? The rabbi. You said now he's revealing great secrets. Um, I don't remember saying that, but the, but it's something that I was talking about. Yeah, the rabbi is, the rabbi is revealing how to draw down guidelines on two levels into the world. There's Edna Sarah, and you know who else? Who, uh, we was also Karen. Where's Karen? Karen and Ahuva are still missing. Since we got bumped off, but Karen knows that we can. We have to re-enter. I don't see Ahuva on the contacts. I'm looking. I don't. How, how does she spell her name? Ahuva. A, a H U V A, right? Yeah. You don't see her. It's not coming up when I... So maybe that's why she doesn't know. Oh, can we read? I found it. Okay, wait, wait. Okay, good. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alyssa. Okay. And, and Karen? Karen. Karen knows we have to re-enter. Okay, okay. Okay, so just a whole lot of she knows. Okay, so this is a very... Yes, this is a very um, important thing that I was teaching us. It's an axiom again. It's a general learning... 
that we need to, we can apply in everyday life. That, and, you know, it's something actually, you know, <laughs> I remember, and it's, it's very important because um, it's like, how do you know what to learn? There's so many things to learn, right? And some people say you need to learn more revealed Torah, right? The Gemara, the Mishnah, the, the things that were given to us at Mount Sinai, um, the, 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 the written Torah, right? The Chumash, the, the, the understanding, the, the, the five books of Moses with all its understandings. Okay, so there's the, well, the so like, and then there's Hasidus. So the inner dimensions of Torah. So what are we supposed to, you know, <laughs> emphasize more okay what are we supposed to put our emphasis on and I remember even when I started Beis Chana I was asked somebody to help sponsor and he wasn't Chabad or wasn't Hasidic and he asked me what are you going to be teaching what are you going to be um you know bringing out through Beis Chana and I said mostly Hasidus <laughs> the inner dimensions they says what about you know Chumash or things like that is it yeah, but the the main that too, but the main thing is gonna be that I'm trying to teach is Hasidus. So the question, you know, I, I don't he didn't really he wasn't too excited by that. So <laughs> what is the point and what is the need and why is it that we need to learn Hasidus? Okay, so the Eva explains the difference between the uh, learning the external dimensions, which is the right, the body of Torah, the revealed laws of Torah, or the revealed aspects of Torah, which is the Torah Shabbat, the written Torah, and then the oral Torah, which is developed by us, which is actually, you know, the oral Torah is the Gemara, the Mishnah, the and 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 the, the additional things that the rabbis um, explained and interpreted, and that includes in it, the Rebbe says, the Hasidus, which is Kabbalah, that, those were things, Hasidus wasn't written down, by Moshe Rabbeinu, when Torah was given, it was it was given orally to certain people, and only few people had it. the 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 wonderful thing about Hasidus is that in our in the times of the Baal Shem Tov, then it was revealed to the masses. Okay, whatever was given orally just to very few select high level people was now revealed to everybody. And now we have the inner parts of Torah. So what's the difference? The written part of Torah is the, the revelations of godliness services of things that are revealed good. It's easy to see godliness. It's easy to see, um, to, to connect to the holiness of Shabbos. It's there no matter what. Whereas the inner dimensions of Torah help us reveal the hidden good in the world. Things that we would not see as good to begin with. And we have to look deeper and see the deeper intent, the inner meaning. And then we see the goodness in them. And it says it's similar to those parts of Torah that weren't revealed directly. And we have to um, undercover, like not undercover, uncover um, through understanding all the rules of Torah and looking deeper, looking deeper. And so Hasidus also helps us look deeper into the neshama, the soul of the intent of the thing that's not explicitly seen. And we reveal the inner good and in things. Okay, so let's see it inside. So this is uh, this is in, in specific services. This is a difference between the revealed parts of Torah and the panemius of Torah, the inner dimensions of Torah. But there's the, the, the body of Torah and then there's the soul of Torah. The soul is corresponding to the Hasidus, the inner dimensions. Nigla, the Torah, the revealed parts of Torah, Megala Beka Talachot. So now, so the, okay, so what I said before is in general, is the difference between the written Torah and the oral Torah. But the Rebbe now says this difference also applies to the difference between the revealed parts of Torah, Nigle, and Hasidus. Okay, so the difference between the written Torah and the oral Torah, the Rebbe is paralleling that difference to the difference between the revealed parts of Torah, which includes Gemara and Mishnah and Halacha, to the inner dimension of Torah, which is what we're learning, which is Hasidus, which is to reveal the, the inner, deeper dimensions of things. So, so what I said before exactly is not exactly, <laughs> I'm sorry, I went a step further, okay? The, there's what I said before about the difference between the written Torah and the oral Torah is similar to the difference between the written, the revealed part of Torah and the hidden part of Torah, the Hasidus. Okay, so let's see it inside. Nigla the Torah, the revealed parts of Torah, Megala Bika Talachot, reveals the laws. What should we do daily in actuality? How do we how do we translate into everyday physical behavior? Which is connected mainly to our real part of the body, which a real part of us, which is the body. It's mostly how you know which hand do we use, which where do we go, 
How do we sit? How do we stand? All these things connected, you know, the mitzvah is connected with our body. Uh, it's connected with the body of the human, uh, the Jew, and the body of the world, the things in the world. This um, observing the commandments with our physical body in a physical world reveals, it connects the Jew and the world, right? We're using the world, so it connects us and the world with the revealed parts of Hashem, which is godliness, which is um, which is within the confines and limitations and the limitations and it's relatable to the world. So we keep we keep uh, we keep the commandments with our physical body in a physical world. We we're able to draw down godliness that is relatable and accepted and revealed and and, and within the definitions of the world. The inner dimension of Torah, which is what we're learning here with the Rebbe, talks about mainly the inner dimension of and the, and the soul of the person and the world. World. There's an inner dimension to us. Not we're not just bodies. We're bodies of souls. The world too. The Rebbe says has its external aspect and has its inner dimension to it. And through learning the inner dimensions of Torah Hasidus, we connect ourselves in the world with the hidden aspects of godliness. What's the hidden aspect of godliness? Godliness that's beyond the world, completely beyond the world. It's, 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 it's not really relatable or definable by the world. So that's why people see sometimes they look at Hasidim and they, they say, we don't know what you're talking about. We, we can't relate to where you're coming from. Like, show us, you know, where does it say in Torah <laughs> that you're supposed to behave in such a, um, you know, where does it say in Halacha that you, you know, go out to the furthest corner of the earth and start, you know, doing things that are not told, taught to you in Halacha that you must do. Okay, Torah law, Jewish law doesn't say go out to Nicaragua. <laughs> I see Chabad of Nicaragua is, um, you know, and my contacts. And it, so when I put up on my WhatsApp status, uh, you know, about my husband checking tefillin or making tefillin or whatever, they're checking it out. So as they're coming to my mind, Chabad Nicaragua, who said, you know, in Halacha, it doesn't say you go to Chabad, to, you go out to Nicaragua and start a Chabad house. So that comes from the power of the energy of learning Hasidus, to be able to, to reveal godliness in Nicaragua. <laughs> okay? So, um, that, right, so you're able, to the inner dimensions of Torah, you can reveal godliness that's beyond the world, reveal godliness that's beyond the definitions of this world. The power to reveal the good that's revealed in the world which is the level of seven, right? Seven days of creation, who bekali de gali de is mainly through the real parts of the the power that we have to reveal the inner good, which is the power of ten, even the hidden, hidden good that's hidden kindness of Hashem and in, in things in the world, which is hidden in like in a fast day that you don't see. You see a fast day, but to be able to see the hidden good in the fast day, etc. Through learning the inner dimensions of Torah, right? So who, 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 it's like if you go to a non Chabad place years ago, now things are changing because people are all over are learning Hasidus. But if you'd go to a non Chabad place before and you'd go to them on a fast day, it's a very, very, very somber, sad time and very, very focused on how sad you can be. You know, the more sad you are, the holier you are, or the more you're, they, you think you're doing God's intent. Whereas when you learn Hasidus, Hasidus teaches us to see that everything is good. Everything in the world, even though it's destruction and we're lamenting the destruction, the Rebbe shows us how we could see the good. And the Rebbe is, I think, going to bring it in the secret. Yeah. yeah, how we can see the good. Now, um, um, the more sad that you are, is that what you said? That was, if you would go to like a place uh, yeah, that yeah. doesn't have Hasidus, yeah, you're supposed to try to be as sad as possible and try to lament as much and try to focus on things that will make you sad. But not not by Hasidim. We don't we don't try to make ourselves sad, God forbid. It's very at the other says it's, it's we have to avoid um being sad. Yeah, we can feel bitter. He explains the whole difference. 
but um, dr dragging ourselves down and being sad is not not <laughs> not a good idea, according to Hasidus. And we have people just to throw themselves in the snow. Yeah, right. We don't do that. We don't do that. Um, we try to look for the deeper inner meaning of this of the fast day, which is to come close to God. Okay, to draw us closer to God, to be more in tune with God on a deeper level. Uh, and so, but he says over here like this, like we see in actuality, they have an when you understand the inner dimension of the soul of the matter, of what we're dealing with, the soul of the fast day, why did Hashem uh, destroy the temple? It wasn't just because he was angry at us and he's fighting against us and punishing us. No, the soul of it focuses more on Hashem is cleaning us, like his son, a father cleans their son up. Then you could see also the hidden good, that's hidden. Even though on the external, we don't really see the bad, or we don't see that, the Rebbe doesn't use the word God, bad, God forbid. We see the opposite of good. The Rebbe always said, I didn't like to use the word bad, but I would like to use the word opposite of good. So, so even if we see the opposite of good, if you have chassidus, you can focus on what's the soul of the matter, what's the inner intent, why did God bring this destruction? There's an inner intent, which is not just to destroy, the inner intent is to bring a cleansing and a higher revelation and a bigger revelation through the destruction. Okay, so let's continue on. The Alp, you say, according to this, we can say, so the Sanada Chadesh of the Rebbe, Shagam Shatash, about Pebichlul Nit Gautali Dei Avodat Adam. In general, the real the Torah of the oral Torah was revealed to us through our avoda, through our working in to reveal the, the 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 laws and stuff, you know, through all the thirteen principles of how you learn deduce the rules of Torah. Because in order to reveal the hidden aspects of Torah, to this the inner hidden dimensions of Hashem, which wasn't revealed down here below in a revealed way. It wasn't given down here below in a revealed way. You have to have your inner work. We have to sit here and learn, <laughs> right? And understand and take it to heart and understand it in a way that, in a deeper way, right? It's not just spoon fed to us um, easily. We, the, Rebbe is, the Rebbe is working hard. We're working hard to understand things that don't just come naturally that you can see with our logical uh, I, uh, mind and our physical eyes how good it is. We have to t look deeper to the inner the inner aspect of what we're learning to see the good in it. So that's what we're doing through Hasidus, through Pneumius, the inner dimensions of Torah, and it takes extra effort on our part. Now, this is similar, and there was corresponding this to the second tablet that had an advantage to the first tablets. The first tablets were given by God, and the second tablets Moshe Rabbeinu had to initiate and, and, and actually write them, or not write them, engrave them on the stone. He had to do the work and he, when he gave them, though, he gave more revelations of Torah that were brought about through him more than he was given when he came down the first time with the first tablets. In general, the oral Torah has a lot, lot, lot more to it, it volumes and volumes and volumes, much more than you have in the written books of the five books of Moses and the and even the prophets, the Tanakh is also included in that. There's 24 books of the written Torah. Well, any questions? I need to take a breather. <laughs> oh, I have a question. Yes. So Moshe, Moshe had to do the work. So yes. I, uh, this may be a crazy question, but like, it's not his Torah Hadasha, is it? It's not. Is it? Is that what it's called? Um, the Torah Chadash of the Rebbe refers to that time, Torah Mashiach, in times of the redemption, the okay. future times. Okay. Yeah. So it's not there. No. So that would be it is. Yeah. yeah. No, but, we're, but we're in redemption now, right? Like, unless we have to wait till Mashiach is revealed yeah. and then there's the real Torah. Yeah, I mean, what we're learning right now is already the revelations of Torah Chadash. Mashiach, yeah. Times of Mashiach, yeah. <laughs> what? That's no Torah, so what he revealed, it was the Torah Hadasha. Oh, well, I didn't hear you. What did you say? What was the first part, I said at the time when Moshe revealed the Torah, it was no Torah given. So that was Torah Hadasha. But, uh, but what he mean about Torah Hadasha is because we have the Torah and we are waiting for Mashiach's Torah. 
Yes. But at that time, for at the time of Moshe, whatever he revealed was the Torah Hadashah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's the parallel of the same concept. So I was saying it's the same concept of the revelations of the oral Torah throughout the generations. I guess you could say from Moshe Rabbeinu, <laughs> and the development of the rabbis of the oral Torah to understand it and relate to it uh, to their times. Right? They, every time the, the rabbis had to take a um, a rule of Torah and apply it to their situation and make a new rule, halakhic ruling. That's taking the oral Torah and, and developing it. So it, take, it takes more effort by the rabbis to understand, and that's 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 parallel to what, what they was saying is what Hasidus does, which is to look at, the, uh, puts takes more effort. The parallel that the Rebbe puts between the oral Torah and Hasidus is that it takes the effort on our part to reveal it. To bring it out. That's the, the parallel. So the oral Torah, as as it is in like Gemara, Mishnah, Halacha, that's still the, the body of Torah. So it's still the, the, the connected to the body or the more the external, the real parts of Torah. And then you have an even deeper dimension of Torah, which also has to be revealed by us people to work to see the inner dimensions of Torah. It's not just, we have to take the teachings of Hasidus and see the inner kavana. We have to learn it and apply it and understand it in such a way that we reveal the inner dimensions to ourselves and to the world. So that takes more effort, just like the oral Torah takes more effort. And it reveals inner dimensions, hidden things that weren't necessarily revealed um, um, uh, to everybody at, at Mount Sinai. It wasn't written down at Mount Sinai, just like the old Torah wasn't written down. It's developed later. So that's the correlation of the, that the Rebbe gives. But, um, okay. So, yes, they, like Moshe Rabbeinu did learn Hasidus, but not the way we're learning it and developing it now. It's similar to like Moshe Rabbeinu gave the oral Torah, but it was developed over the years and revealed more and more into new laws and new laws and new laws and new understandings and new explanations, right? It was developed with the, 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 you know, by the rabbis. So similar to that, we're developing the inner dimensions of Hasidus in a way that we understand it as it applies to our computers and our smartphones and our daily life. Okay? So, okay. Um, I have another Chavrusa that's calling me. So I'm thinking maybe we should stop here. Okay. We finish nine. Um, because we still have we still today is uh, Wednesday and we still have two more days and we we don't have okay. Um, we have Balak too. We have, hopefully we have Balak. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> finish nine. Um, let's do one more. Let's see how it goes. Um, Did we finish nine yet? No, we're, we're still nine. Okay, got it. Okay. So we have one more that we have to finish and then we can go to the next one. Okay. So we have one more that we have to finish and then we can go to the next one. Okay. So we have one more that we have to finish and then we can go to the next one. Okay. So we have one more that we have to finish and then so this kind of answers more or less this question of or and what Rivka was discussing what was revealed and what's revealed more. So the Rebbe goes into this into detail right here. Um, this is one of the reasons the Rebbe says that the revelation of the inner dimensions of Torah, which are corresponding to the three parts of the brain, Chachma uh, Binadas, which correspond to the three kind, um, lands of the Kenyans and Kanwani that the Jews didn't inherit when they first came to Israel, that will be added to us when in the times of La Siglova, times of Mish of Geula. this additional level of being able to understand God, godliness on the level of our intellect, you know, the Chochmah Binandas, 
in a, in a, a higher understanding, a deeper understanding specifically comes after we're in Gullus in exile for a very, very long time, which is much longer than the time that the Jews were in Egypt, right? Egypt, they're just there 210 years. We're in this Gullus for 3,000, over 3,000 years or uh, almost 3,000 years, almost. Um, okay. Um, so, right, so this is much longer. Now, they had to go through Mitzrayim in order to have their revealed parts of Torah. They had to go through that exile 210 years in order to receive the Torah at Mount Sinai. And similar to the Sarba says, in our, uh, you know, in order to get the deeper revelations of Hasidus, of the inner dimensions of Torah, the hidden parts of Torah, were also have gone through a very, very, very long Gullus exile that was longer even, because there's, I guess, um, it's harder. It's more more avoid the more work to reveal these inner dimensions of Hashem that are hidden, more hidden. They're, they're the hidden parts of Torah, the secrets of Torah. And it says that um, in the latest in the later generations, we've had the we've had the 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 ability to be those who taste and receive life. Those who taste it have life in the in our generations, in the later generations, starting from. The Arizo, which he said, it's a mitzvah to reveal this 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 Torah, this inner hidden secrets, and then afterwards, it, afterwards, much more through the Baal Shem Tov, the Yafutsu minus the came at the time of the Baal Shem Tov, and afterwards, having it more dressed in our Chokhmah Binandas, in our brain, uh, the brain and intellect, in a way of a, uh, in a Isparnason, which is like feeding us even more through the teachings of Chassidus of Chabad of the Alter Rebbe. And the uh, Rebbeim who filled his place, who took over. But behold, over there, in every every generation, every generation is added more and increased more in the revelations of the inner dimensions, the hidden secrets of Torah, and and the secret secrets of Torah. So the inner dimensions, every generation become. There's more and more and more revelations as we see the different Chabad Rebbeis. Um, just built on the ones before and added more and added more and added more, okay? And until our times where they ever just blew us out of the water <laughs> with the amount and, and depth and breadth and revelations, which to me seem like the revelations of Mashiach because like these are teachings that you can't come with a human brain, mind, deducing um, deduction. The Rebbe has these understandings that it, it's definitely revelations from above in a way of like of prophecy, like how could you know the things that the Rebbe says in his teaching? It's not, it's not just, it's not humanly possible without a higher consciousness awareness of God's uh, intent and God's understanding God in a higher level of vision to be able to come to these teachings that the Rebbe is giving us in the Tzamachos. It's just not. It's if you learn them. I mean, if, if somebody has to learn them to see it, so that's what the Rebbe is saying. It takes a lot. It takes work. It takes us learning it and applying it and trying to see it and understand it in our daily life and see it in our day-to-day -day, um, mundane um, uh, dealing with the body and the physical world. And when we apply the inner, seeing the inner good in everything, that's applying Hasidus. And that's bringing Torah to a level that wasn't revealed ever before. Okay. It's like the, is, that, is that what it means when we say we receive the Torah every day anew? Yeah, yeah, every second, every second, we're we're like in the state of reorienting ourselves with Hashem, and 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 um, that's what the Rebbe brings about. It's not every just every day anew, but every moment. That's what the Rebbe says in this sicha, and another sicha too. That it's, it's you know, all along there is, is, is constantly bringing this this concept of Hasidus teaches us that we're being created anew every second from nothing to something, and that gives us the opportunity to draw down godliness and that awareness and connection to God and reveal God in the world in a new way every moment. <laughs> that, that takes a little bit of effort. Yeah, so created anew means receive Torah. Is that true? Well, creating new is, is, I guess, yeah, revealing godliness, revealing the glory of Hashem at this moment. We have the power to do that when, when we understand the inner dimensions of Torah, the Hasidus. We, we wouldn't be able to do that without learning Hasidus. 
we won't be able to appreciate or understand or relate to that at all if we didn't understand the teaching of the Baal Shem Tov. As it's taught throughout the Rebbe and taught, brought through the Rebbe, that we're being created every moment. What does that mean, we're being created every moment? You have to learn Chassidus. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's try to finish paragraph nine. Um, okay. Saying, you could possibly ask a question. Rebbe says, you could ask a question. You could say, how is it possible? Our generation, every generation says we go lower and lower in our consciousness. Further and further down a level of holiness maybe or something but it just it, the, the, the understanding uh the, it doesn't say exactly what it is it's called the data the generations get less and less okay um now and it, it like it says if the previous generations were like angels then we're like people and if the previous generations were like people then we're even less than that okay <laughs> So how much more so there ever says in these latest generations of the, the times of Ikvasa de Mashiach, or what it's called, the heels of Mashiach. How could we say that specifically now in the uh, was revealed in the later generations, the heels of Mashiach was revealed and in a, in a breadth and depth, right? Like the Rebbe said, starting from the Arizal, going to the Baal Shem Tov, going to our, through all the Rebbe's. How can we say that during that time specifically, was revealed and in a and a breadth and depth and the inner dimensions of Torah more than was revealed to the previous generations when they were in this very very high level. <laughs> as of that you and I, as you know, little uh, <laughs> not such great Torah scholars, are coming together and get to learn all this uh, unbelievable inner hidden secrets of Torah in a way that we can relate to it and apply to our lives. Like who are we? <laughs> So you could ask, how is that possible? Okay. Rabbi Uba said, they have explained, the explanation is, specifically through our service down here below, in the lower mundane world, okay, the matha, the down below, we're able to reveal the hidden things. More than things that are revealed on their own. This is similar to what we said before, that specifically through the service of man, we are able to reveal the three higher levels of, of awareness, the Chokma Bin Adas, which correlates, we said, to the ten lands, which will be revealed in times of Mashiach, meaning we're able to, the Rebbe says, the Inyanim, the aspects, that are not revealed in the creation on its own. Even though it's a complete and whole creation by Hashem, right? We said there are things that Hashem put into the creation. He revealed godliness and the limited finite definitions of the world. And that is easy to reveal through the revealed parts of Torah. We need the inner dimension of Torah to be able to reveal those things that don't appear so good and are more difficult and take more deeper work on our part to reveal them okay so and we explained this idea of and we said this i think yesterday or the day before now we know that specifically through the service of the darkness of exile especially in the latest later generations in the lower last generation when the darkness is arousing more, our our service it's making us work harder, right? The more dark there is, the more hard we have to work, and we reveal the wellsprings of the inner dimensions of Torah more. Therefore, in every generation, is added more and more. Specifically through the 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 descent of every generation. So we could see, you know, it says that Moshe Rabbeinu is going to be in awe of what we're revealing in our times. When he sees the times of the later generations, the chidushim and the and the new insights and the deeper, he's going to be in awe. It's like, he's going to be like, like wow. <laughs> and this is also, you see it even now, you see big rabbis um, are in awe of young women teaching 
Hasidus in a way that, wow, they weren't able to for many years teach. You know what I'm saying? This is the, that's what I was saying. The lower down we go, the more avoida and effort we are putting into revealing God into our low level, as in a world that's dark and concealed, that we're like working to see, apply Hasidus to our daily life and come with this wow insights that even the biggest rabbis wouldn't necessarily be able to come to without this, these, you know, these obstacles, you know? <laughs> it's like the power of the Baal Shuvah over the tzaddik, you know, the, the, there's that transformational power of the work of the Baal Shuvah that, that tzaddik is an of. Okay, so we finished nine. Any questions? Yeah, and Ova never came back. Yeah, when I hear I'm, these young girls speaking Hasidus and Karen, teaching Chabra, yeah, I'm blown away with yeah. their brilliance. Yeah, but you know, also a lot because I people are much more educated now than they were in the past. Yeah. Um, remember, women weren't educated before, and now they are, and then yeah. now you have everything: computers and this. And the Rebbe pushed for internet and computers. He said that the whole world is going to see Mashiach. Yeah. On this. Yeah. Also, according to what I was saying, a lot of the rabbis are very, very focused on learning the revealed parts of Torah. You know, and they have to pass in halacha, and they have to, you know, and they're not necessarily so able to focus or give, you know, the, given that much to over to Chassidus because their their job is to help, you know, you know, determine the, you know, Torah law. So a a a, a girl who's raised, you know, doesn't have to learn, you know, three parking of random every day. <laughs> doesn't have, you know, doesn't have to, you know, Gemara Sata and, you know, do Daffodil or whatever it is. <laughs> she has more time to learn Hasidus. So, also, yeah, also Hasidus is now taught in the Shikas, you know, since the, the, the previous Rebbe, and even in Cheder, and to girls. Yeah. No, but also, today we have, um, you know, we can play things over and over and over again, and we can, you know, yes. record long, long, and, right. and you get to any point you want in a second rather than having to rewind. Right. And, also, so women are more intuitive by nature, so we have that yeah. power of intuition, which you need to learn Hasidus. It, it's definitely helpful to have this ability to be intuitive and uh, kind of grasp uh, concepts that are a little, you need a little bit of intuition to grasp them. And also, Hasidus is what also the point of Hasidus is to apply it into your life. And it's not like the rabbis come and explain to you, this is how Hasidus applies to your life. You have to do the work yourself to understand how it applies. So that's um, also more effort on our part. So the more effort, the more we try to apply Hasidus to our life, the more effort we put into it, the more we are revealing, you know, dimensions of godliness in this world. So yeah, it takes effort. And it's not necessarily something that's, it's just like, you know, similar to the idea, you can parallel, you know, the Torah Shebikhtab, the written Torah has to be developed and and with, the you know, the Yudgim Umidas, Shatar Nidashisban, the rabbis have rules of how they can apply Torah into our daily life of act, physical activity. There's, there's, we have to be able to translate the, the teachings of Hasidus in a way that they apply to our daily life and our service of Hashem. The Rebbe helps us a lot. So, but we have to like learn it and relate to it and understand it and apply it. So that's that takes that's our effort. And uh, and I guess maybe women have more time to do it and more able to. Have, but it's it's about applying it. It's not just about learning a theory. So women in general also are very good at applying things. I think you know making things yeah, practical. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't take time necessarily, but we apply it while we do things. Yeah. You know, while right. We, right. We think about it in a more right. practical, tangible way. How does it apply to my life in this reality? Well, now the rabbi said we have another level that we have to have the kavanah. What we do now is we have to have the kavanah. Not to bring it back down. The thing we do now, right? I mean, hopefully yeah. we're reaching into the levels higher, but we have to also bring it down. Yes. If, if it doesn't just Rabbi Akiva going up, but it took the um everything on the level that we do right now, right? Yes. But the original of Kavanaugh, all this we did today, we're bringing it down here now. 
Yes. Yes. Every day. Yes. All the time. Every day, all the time. We have to have our kavana. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we should have done that. We should have said this year. We should say every year we do. It's the covenant that brings your mind into our lives. Yes. Last of all, brought the other kavana. If you ladies do the psukim at the end, that's one of the psukim. The whole point of creation was to bring, is to bring Hashem revealed down here below. That's the Kavana. And that was the Kavana of creating all the worlds, higher worlds, lower worlds, to make a dwelling place here below. So enjoy your day revealing Hashem in every little aspect. <laughs> Thank you good so luck. much. Just trying to get every aspect in there. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Okay. Take care. Be well. That's Thank you. Thank you. Okay. See you hopefully tomorrow.